Hi guys, uh, thanks for coming along. Today I wanted to do a brief talk about object-oriented programming, some of its basic principles. I will be doing some videos more in relation to C-sharp programming and some of the Gang of Four design patterns, but I really just wanted a back reference to just talk about those basic core principles that would apply to any object-oriented programming languages. So let's get started. So, what is object-oriented programming? Object-oriented programming is a programming paradigm based on the concept of objects. Objects are created using an object-oriented programming language, and these objects are made to represent something that we would identify and feel representative of the real world. Data and functions are bundled together. This unit you would term an object. Objects and class structures used to build them are based only on four basic concepts. That is to say that using four basic concepts alone, hand in hand, object-oriented programming can be used to define, model, represent and solve real-world problems. So, what are these four basic concepts? Well, there's encapsulation, you have abstraction, inheritance and polymorphism. Let's talk about these in turn. Okay, but before we go through these four key concepts, let's just jump in and build an object. I watch so many videos where we just jump straight into these four concepts and really object-oriented program is about building objects. So let's just go through this classic idea where you have a class and through its constructors, you build objects. I'd just like to get that base idea out of the way first. Okay, so here we have a diagram and what I want the beginner to get into the mindset of is that the class is the design and then we take that design and then we make the object. Let's look at that process. So here we have the build process. We take our design, which is the class, and through the constructor process, we build the objects. Let's look at this with some examples of code. Okay, some code. What is it that we've got here? Well, on the left hand side, you have the design, the class. And on the right hand side, you have how you would build the object. So starting with the design. The design, we decide to call person, class, person. And within that class, the brackets, we've got two ideas for what that person might be, how you want to look at that person. One of them is a string, which is a person's name. And secondly, we've got an integer, which is a person's age. That's all we want to say about the person in this particular design. On the right hand side, we have how we would make that object. We've made two. One of them, we decided to make one object called my pal. And the second one, we decided to make a person called dad. And in the next diagram, we'll have a little discussion about how we go from the class, the design, to the object, the reality. Let's just see if this code makes any sense. What we have up here is the line that turns design into an object. So what do we have? On the left hand side, we have what you want to make and what you want to call it. And on the right hand side, the other side of the equal sign or assigns to is how you're going to make that object. So left hand side, what you're making, what you want to call it. On the right hand side, the constructor that you choose to make it, which is often the same name because a person constructor makes a person. So I hope that makes sense. After it goes through the construction process of new person, you will have an object of type person and it will be called my pal. And that is the basic structure of how we make objects. Let's have a little look next at what we have actually created. I like to think visually when I, I do coding and programming, and this is what this diagram's really all about. What is our object? What have we just created? 
Well, I like to think of it as a box. It's a warehouse of whatever it is we've made and how it works. And what we have inside that box is the things that we've got in our design. So at the moment, we've got an empty box because we haven't said what this person's name is yet, my pal. And we have an empty box which would store a number which would be the age of that person. So at this moment in time, this diagram is saying, here's an object. The type of object is person. Inside, we've got all the things in the design. We've got the string for the name. It's an empty space at the moment. We can fill that. And we have the age, which is at the moment an empty number. But its identity is called my pal, and that is what we have just built. For the complete beginner, we've now shown how to build some objects. I didn't want to rush straight into the, the four concepts of object orientated programming without first demonstrating uh, some of the basics. So let's move on to what those four basic concepts are. Those of encapsulation, abstraction, inheritance and polymorphism. We will now go back to discussing these in turn. Uh, I think you'll understand that we've already done a little bit already, uh, which won't hurt at all. So let's get back onto that. We've uh, covered what is now part one because I've had to split, split these videos up. If you want to carry on and our conversation and head towards um, encapsulation and abstraction, Please, please, could I encourage you to go on to the next video and uh, I can carry on. And I would really appreciate it if you could like or subscribe uh, to this video now. Thank you.